Yeah. Ooh, big. I am still reeling. From the end of the have and the have nots tonight, I am still reeling. Y'all, I wasn't even going to do the review until in the morning, but I had to come down and through, bitch. I had to come down here because we had to talk about this. We had to start talking about this tonight. Because, girl, did Tyler not bring it tonight? Did Tyler Perry not bring it on tonight? I started calling this motherfucker and say, Old, old Nash tribute to T.S. Madison. I swear I started to come down here and say, bitch, y'all hold sleep. Where well, if y'all get up. Because, girl, we need to talk about what happened last night. What happened tonight, honey. We need to talk about what happened tonight. Y'all, I wasn't even going to do the review till tomorrow. Because, see, I was watching the first time. The first play of it is usually the one I watch to enjoy for myself. And then I'm I more likely would go back and watch the 11 o'clock broadcast. I'm on Central Standard Time. And I would watch that one and do my notes. But, girl, I, tonight was so goddamn good. Tonight was good. It, it, it renewed a little hope. It, it renewed a little hope because I see he killing off characters and I love it. We need to close up some storylines around here. And it looks like he, he finally heard our prayers, y'all. He finally did. Now, keep in mind, before I do this review, a girl did not write not one damn note. Because I told y'all, this was the, this the viewing of the show that I do simply for my enjoyment and pleasure. I go back and I watch it at 11 o'clock to get the note so I can be accurate with y'all. So, let me just tell you, I'm going to be accurate, bitch. I'm going to be accurate tonight. But, there's a possibility this ain't finna be in order. But I promise you... We going to hit everything. This is off the dome. And y'all know I, I just had that shit. So, you know, everything to serotonin sometimes be a little slow. But it, it's mixing. It's mixing. Okay? So, follow me. Okay? We open up. Back at Hannah House. Police taking Ben ass to jail. Candace asking what's going on. Um, Hannah really know what's going on. But she ain't feeling the fact that her son going to jail. So they, they put the handcuffs on him and he act like he wanted to resist in the house. But he did resist when he got outside by the police car. Now, Benny, I told y'all that is a big old pretty mall and it's not one damn shopper in the building. It ain't one. It ain't one shopper in the building. Ben is so damn stupid. Then the people check your pockets and find all that money that Uncle uh, Malone that's up in the hospital had gave your ass. And you hollering about, that's my money. That's my money. Like they gonna say, okay, this is yours. We gonna give it back to you. Onward to jail, you go. So he gets carted off to jail and Hannah feeling some kind of way. Candace, every time you come over here, see, every time you come around, this kind of stuff happens. Candace is not caring. She acting like she can't talk about she going to go down there and see and, and yada, yada, yada. But really, to tell you the truth, what Candace is mostly concerned about is that money. She need Benny to get to that money. So she telling Hannah that she wants that money. And Hannah say, I give it to the F, B, and the damn I. Before I let you get a dime of it. Do you hear what I say, little girl? Before I give you a dollar or a dime, I take it down there to the FBI. Candace say, you don't know what you're talking about. She said, huh, I bet you they'll take it. Now try me. I ain't going to give you nothing. So she going to tell Hannah, I need that money. Hannah said, I ain't giving you that money. You ain't going nowhere near that money until we figure out what's going on here. She had the audacity to tell her mama... In a menacing voice, bitch. That she. <laughs> that she don't want to have to show her how evil she can be. Hannah braced up and said, try it. I, I want to see you do it. You ain't got to tell me how evil you is. I see it every time you come around here. But you try it. So basically, she telling her mama in so many words, I'm going to do you something about my money. Her mama said, start today and see if you make tomorrow. Hannah told her, get your ass from away from around here. Uh, go do something with yourself. Get, in front, get from in front of my house. She going to tell her mama, so you would rather work for her and, and live in her house. Hannah said, I work for everything I got good. 
She said, I work too. She said, oh, no, no, no. You don't do no work, baby. Selling your ass ain't work. Candace said, well, yeah, it actually is. Hannah said, look, I'm going to tell you one more time. Get your ass away from around my house. I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. You ain't getting that money. Bye, girl. So, Candace is acting like, oh, I ain't worried about it. I strong arm her if I have to. So, she shashays her ass onto her car and gets in it. And when she get in it, she calls down there to the bar and tell RK, call Smitty and some other person. And he like, oh, you in the robberies now? And he, she said, no, I need some muscle. He said, oh, I might have to have somebody uh handle and... He said, who? She said, my mama. He was like, oh, damn. Okay, all right. And I said, see, what happened in this episode should have happened, but it should have been the other person that went out the window. Okay? Because I can't, I ain't here for, I'm not here for Candace. I can take a lot of her, her bull because she's entertaining around these parts. But this part right here, I don't feel at all. Because you too doggone disrespectful. It's got to be a, it's got to be some consequences to her actions at some point. That is below evil to set up a possible scheme to get your mama ass whooped. You ain't shit, girl. Mm. Mm -mm. You ain't shit. David then went home and Erica got a nice bubble bath with rose petals waiting for him and she get him in there and he's upset and she can tell. He tell her he raised the boy. I said, now nah, you raised your hand. That's what you raised, but okay. You raised the boy. He said he hit Veronica and he explained what happened and he is feeling really, really bad about the situation because he thinking, man, I just messed up. She finna be tripping. That's why he was telling Erica, look, you gotta be extremely careful now because Veronica is gunning for me and he, she's gonna mess with anybody I care about, namely you. Well, she told him to forgive himself. That man was literally hurt that he had done that. Plus, he didn't want her to be looking at him sideways because she's supposed to be coming from an abusive relationship or whatnot. You know, that was her story. So, they wind up getting it in in the tub. And I'm like, oh, child, Erica cannot ride no... Mm. Let me stop. All I know is David had to flip her to get it in. I said, yes, God. I know Peter Peros is a oh uh, 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 uh he ain't old he probably around by my age maybe a little bit older but he is sexy child he made me want he made me feel some kind of way shit I sat up in the bed girl I almost stood up a minute and and and, and just just had to look at it from a distance oh but anywho they get sit in and what's not okay. Where else I'm going to go with this? Okay, let's let's get this RK situation out the way. Him and Jill down to the bar. They, I, they so unnecessary to me. They really are. And basically, she's saying that to him, you know, how well do you know Candace? Because basically, she just beat the hell out of Rocky in front of me with a golf court, uh, golf uh, stick. And, and she didn't say why. She just said he did something to her. And he's standing there like, oh, okay, well, that just means you shouldn't do anything against her, right? So she like, you really sprung, right? And then as they standing there talking, here come Rocco, or Rocky. He come in there and uh, he want to speak to uh, RK in the back. So they get back there. He basically asking him, so did you tell on me or something? Because she said that she knew that I had uh, been, you know, doing shit behind her back. So did you snitch on me? Who snitched on me? He said he didn't snitch. But he did. We'll talk. Well, we gonna go and get that out the way. So, child, he planning on getting Candace ass. Rock or uh, RK is playing both sides of the fence. He dealing with um. He's dealing with Candace trying to get a come up, and he's dealing with Rocky like he's on his team and trying to get a come up. This boy don't care about nothing because he's going to tell Gia at the ball that he's trying to get his money up so he can get out of Savannah and go to L.A. because he's going to be huge. In fact, get his autograph now because he's going to blow up. And I'm like, you might not even make it to the state line because you keep playing these games. Somebody going to kill you. 
So she go to sit down because she trying to make her money because Candace and called and said that she need money and she need money quick. They got a convention coming this weekend. He needs to double work jail, but in the meantime, in between time, she needs to still be making that money right now selling her ass. So she's sitting out there in the, in the little, uh, lobby area, you know, the bar. She's sitting out there in the sitting area of the bar and she's just, you know, scoping different men's. And in comes Jeffrey, right, with that big old booty and that nice watch on. She does she not already marked him right but she marked she barking up the wrong damn tree rk come over there and tell her about what he the nice watch he got on and how he probably got a little money so he sick her on to jeffrey she go over there hey how you doing trying to make small talk gonna ask him what his name he said gay i'm not even interested so she gotta go on about her business because he ain't trying to hear her plus uh she's trying to make her some money Okay, and I think at that point Jim came and he took her ass off to uh go and make her little money. Remember, I said that now because I'm going backwards, I'm all over the place, but I'm a bless you. Now, you got RK asleep with anything moving ass just to make a dollar. He is sitting up at the bar trying to hit on Jeffrey. First, he tried to say Jeffrey was married, then when Jeffrey said he wasn't, first, he said. He remembered Jeffrey from jail. Jeffrey played it off. There wasn't none of him. So then he trying to, you know, after Jill came over there trying to holler at him, he's talking to Jeffrey and he assuming Jeffrey married. And then Jeffrey said, I'm not married. He said, well, why you didn't want to get with her? She said, it. he said, because I'm gay. So then RK wants to say he gay and he want to holler at Jeffrey, but Jeffrey ain't interested in him because he told him, I don't like pushing men, but he's still pushing uh, he trying to get up to Jeffrey's room. Jeffrey told him no. He said, well, how about this? I'll just come up to your room later because the drinks are billed to your room and I already had that information. So Jeffrey just look at his ass crazy and he walk off. Now, is, did Jeffrey move to the Artesian again? Because I thought he was staying in, um, in Davis condo. I mean, damn, I know it got a little ransacked, but you mean he had to move out? He couldn't just get some new furniture? His daddy said we're going to get him some new furniture, child. I don't know. Anyway, so he go off, and I guess R.K. next week will go up to his room. Now, let's go back to Miss Veronica, because she done woke up, and she done got her shit together, baby, and she got it on her mind to start some shit. Now, she was on the phone with a lawyer about something dealing with David, and gave David address and said she'll meet him over there. Now, I don't know exactly what that was, because... I was in and out. I was going to the kitchen and the bathroom doing that. But I do, I did recall her saying that, you know, she gave David address and said she would uh, come over there and see, you know, meet the lawyer there. Then this guy knocks on the door. Big old burly dude, but nothing, nobody that uh, Veronica would really be, you would think she would fool with. But it's, we beginning to see that this woman fools with everybody, right? The guy comes in, she tell him, wipe your feet off. Then when they get in, when he gets in her living room area, she's basically telling him, here's his picture. I want him and her done. And old boy said, okay. So she like, okay, we're going to do it. He said, I got to have half the money. She looking at him like, well, she looking at him like, but he hit me. And then she go into this moment, y'all. Like, Veronica, something happened to her ass when she was younger because she keeps going back. She just literally saying over and over again, he hit me. He hit me. Oh, boy, I got to pull her out of it. And he just lightly touched her on her shoulder. Don't touch me. So she gives him half the money and tells him that she, he asked her, well, how you want this done? He, she said, I want it done big. He said, how big? She said, explosive, and I want them together, and don't text me or call me. I'll contact you when it's done. So she done put a hit out on David, okay? Now, let's go over to um the crazy place, because you got why you're sitting up in there tripping out, right? He wants to he want to get out the uh, straight jacket. The nurse telling him she had to talk to the doctor first. He starts acting a bit erratic, so she leaves out of that nervous ass to go get the doctor. But when she come right back, it ain't the doctor she let in. It's Justin. Now, Justin come in there from the back telling him how he can hang himself. Then this man pulls out some heroin, a spoon, and he is ready to cook this up, put it in a, uh, in a syringe, and... Give give Wyatt the drug. Wyatt at first was like, nah, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. 
when he started cooking that uh, that damn uh, heroin up on that spoon, and that nurse came in there, he had to put it in his pocket. All the time, he had been telling uh, Wyatt, I mean, he had been telling Justin, go away, leave me alone. I'm not gay. I don't want him. I don't know why he has this knack for me like this. We just friends. Justin won't, he clearly as day, want him to die. I want you to get out away from me. He even went so far as to touch this man crouch area to see if he was that the reason why Jeffrey gets so excited about Wyatt. He said, it's nice, but I'm bigger. So then he goes cooking the dope up. He finna get his man some dope. Wyatt saying he don't want it, but it's live watery, and he can't take his eyes off it. So when the nurse come in and tell Je uh, Justin, you got to leave because you weren't supposed to be here this long, Wyatt all of a sudden goes from wanting him to leave to wanting him to stay. He begging to stay because he know the man got the heroin, and he want him to go and inject it into him. Because he was going to do it on the syringe. And I'm like, fool, you so addicted that you actually think that this man is going to give you enough to make you feel good. He going to OD you, fool. Oh, you are stupid. Child, he literally was trying to make Justin stay. And Justin is taking delight because he see him struggling with his addiction. And he want him to go over the edge so that he'll get out of the way so that he can have... Jeffrey to himself, or so he thinks, right? Okay, Jim is at the house. He calls Sarah. What other evidence did y'all have? She basically saying, you ain't got nothing else other than your son. He don't believe her. She telling him, look, you ain't, I don't have, it's nothing else that we had on you guys. Just let it go, leave me alone, and don't call me no damn more. Some kind of way he ends up making her tell him some tea. And she told him that Jill was a undercover informant at the Artesian Hotel. And she is un she's undercover investigating a prostitution ring that they believe Jim and Candace is involved in. So, child, you know Jim is just hilarious. He is he thinks that's hilarious. I'm involved in the prostitution ring. So he lets Sarah off the hook because she done gave some tea for the day. And he goes over to the Artesian fans. Oh Gio sitting there, right? So Gio think it's ching ching payday. And um she takes her ass on and she's getting ready to go over to the uh hotel room with him because he wanna see her. He wanna see her now. Okay? Candace called and said that she and the she finna walk across the lobby. She asking has R. K. seen um Oscar. He said no. Now when Oscar went upstairs, well no, Oscar was getting ready to come downstairs. Yeah, he was getting ready to come downstairs. Or was it? How was it? Because Candace was on the elevator. Let me think. Yeah, hold on. He must have was finna get ready to come downstairs, and she was getting ready to come upstairs. She walks across the lobby. R.K. tells her everything's good. He asks her, do you want me to walk you to your room? She say, no, I'm just going to get on the elevator, and I go on up. So she hangs up with him. Now, before she gets on the elevator to go upstairs, he's walking down the hallway. Jim with Jill finna take her to the room. He see Oscar tell her to go on to the room. And he go over there and ask him about where my money is. I need my money. And he said, Oscar saying, I'm going to get you your coins. I'm going to get you your coins. Jim got a little aggravated with him and kind of threatened him. Oh, Oscar thought he was ready. No, the hell he wasn't because he said he didn't like being threatened because he Jim told him, you're going to find my money or else. And and um Oscar said, well, what you going to do? He said, oh, you must don't know about me. I know enough. Who, where you, who are your sources? Baby, he said, well, if you don't like what I said, you ain't going to like this. And good, gutted him in his stomach, baby, hit him with a one-two to the stomach. And then it would look like he was like trying to bulge the man eyes out and told him, I'm going to give you time. You better find that bitch Candace. You better get my money or it's going to be something. You don't know about me. So Oscar is on his way downstairs. Remember, Candace is on her way upstairs. So when Candace get her ass upstairs, well, she get on, she getting ready to get off the elevator, baby, she looking down at that phone when the elevator door opened and Oscar was standing right there. He went to wait. Child, he hit her a couple of times. 
punched in her face, hit her in her stomach, had her in the damn elevator looking like she was drunk when he drug her off the damn uh, elevator because there was some people walking by. He was like, she didn't have one too many cocktails, okay? Now, I'm going to leave you right there. Let's go back to Jim because now he done went to the room with Gia Ed and he ain't playing no games with her. What you know about me? I already know you're an informant with the DA's office. So, first of all, have you been recording me? No, I haven't been recording you because you haven't told me anything. The job was for me to get you really, really comfortable, and then I would start wearing a wire. So, I haven't been wearing one. That shit. He said, what else? She said, that's it. She get up to want to leave. He told her, you ain't going no damn way until I get all the answers I need. And also, uh, I'm going to get with that ass. Baby, he told her to take her clothes off. She told me, please let me go. He walked up on her. He turned her around. He said, say it again. She said, please let me go. Baby, he said, yeah, we're going to go all the way and push her ass on that bed so he finna rape her. Now, over at Jim and Catherine's, I mean, over at, uh, in at Oscar side of the hotel, he done drug a uh, 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 beat up Candace to that room. She kind of came to herself once he got her in the room, but he slapping her ass and she talking about Oscar. Just listen. He was like, he slapped that first, and then the second time he wanted to hit her, but he just held his hand over his head and kind of walked away from her. Baby, she got up off that couch and pushed his ass. And when she pushed him, he went through the glass window of the hotel. So Candace has killed Oscar. Cause ain't no way in hell from way that far up that he's still alive. But it don't, but it ain't over, bitch. It ain't over. Hannah is down at the police station. She worried about, you know, Benny's and whatnot. We see Catherine coming from the back, like uh back where the detective's office said, and she sees Hannah and asks her what she doing there. She said, he did, uh, I'm down here because of what I told you about being in that boy. She said, my son ain't do this. She said, did you call Marty? Yeah, he on his way. She said, just tell Marty everything and you'll be able to, you know, he's going to be able to get your son out. And she was like, Catherine, I hope so. Catherine said, don't even worry about it. He will get off. Because Catherine know he ain't do it either. So I'm like, what the hell was Katie doing back there? Girl, Catherine go sit in her car. Because she, normally Catherine will stay with Hannah through some stuff. Catherine looked like she was upset. But she was reassuring Hannah, your son going to be fine. I'll be right back. I'll be back. I, I got to go handle something. So she go sit in her car and she is bawling. And I said, Catherine told him. Catherine spilled tea on this dude. And next week, we gonna see her go to bed, uh, go to Wyatt's, uh, little room that he got at the mental ward, and the police gonna come in there to arrest his ass, cause Catherine done told on his ass, remember she said he gotta live up, he got to, they gotta stop covering him, and let him go down, first we seen, doing next week scene, he gonna be telling her he hate her. And then she gonna have them police come in there and get him. You gonna see Candace in a panic talking to Ra, uh, RK because she done pushed this man out this window. Childish, she just getting good. And I think David buys uh, Erica a new car. And that guy that she told to put a hit out on him, he is acting like a utility worker around that house. So we gonna have something similar to a Maggie Day again because she want a big explosion with them together. I said, girl... The house is getting good, girl. The house is getting good. But that was all, y'all. That's all that happened on tonight's episode. It was really, 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 really good. I enjoyed tonight's episode so much. It kind of gave me a feeling of why I first started liking this show in the first place. And it felt good to be able to enjoy my review with you guys. But it was all over the place, but I ain't leave no stone unturned. Everything that happened tonight is in this review. So y'all get down in the panty section. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on it, honey. And remember the depth of your struggle will determine the height of your success. In the meantime, in between time, don't forget to like the video. I always want y'all comments down there. Share the video if you'd like to, but definitely subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys back for, uh, I'll see y'all when I see y'all. Peace. Oh, and child, wasn't it good to see, uh, Forge Rocks back? Oh, my God. 
if you have not gone over to her channel or if you're not subscribed to her channel and what you've been doing, but if you just so happen to don't know who she is, I'm going to link her uh, channel down in my description box down there. And uh, you'll be able to go over there and check her out if you're not subscribed. But I don't know nobody on this set of YouTube that don't know who Forrest Rocks is, honey. Everybody know Roxanne. And I have been a very, very, very long time supporter of her like over four plus years with reports rocks before i was on youtube i was watching roxanne and she had a situation where we thought she had lost her channel but god is good and merciful and she is back down on the youtube streets talking shit swallowing spit and looking pretty while she do it so i put her stuff down in the description box and uh y'all have a good night peace